people used to, just people who were full of themselves, they used to do that, but it was much more 20, 30 years ago. I don't really hear that much of any of that anymore. I agree with that because because you called them out so quickly. You said, what are you doing? Yeah. You know, so idiots. that sort of stuff. Yeah. The most famous baseball player to ever do that is, of course, is Ricky Henderson. Ricky Henderson. <laughs> would always say, you know, always great. Right. Welcome to PTI, boys and girls. In today's episode, Kevin Durant is back. The Bills reportedly want Gronk, and Coach K joins us for five good minutes. But we begin today with the 76ers beating the Knicks last night in James Harden's debut game in Philadelphia. Harden went 29-9-9. In Milwaukee, the defending champion Bucks closed on a 21-6 run to beat Miami, which is still in first place in the Eastern Conference. So, Wilbon, who should feel more confident after last night's win? Well, Tony, Philadelphia should feel more confident because they're just rolling, even though Milwaukee beat a better team. They beat that team with yep. Jimmy Butler having a bad night, which they had something to do with, and they beat that team without Kyle Lowry playing. And as you know, that's my Eastern Conference final. Miami-Milwaukee is my Eastern Conference final. I'm not wandering over yet, although – I will concede to you that the Philadelphia 76ers, with James Harden playing the way he has played this small sample size with Joel Embiid and with Maxi, who people don't even know about around the country. They're just now getting introduced to Maxi. Philadelphia looks like it could be the best team in the East, the best team in all of basketball. But to answer the question about last night, I think that Milwaukee coming back like that at home should feel, you know, I mean, pretty good, too. I'm going to pump the brakes a little bit on Philadelphia, even though you know I have them in the NBA Finals. Because yeah. nine of their next ten games, Mike, are against playoff teams. The Nets, tough, the Heat twice, games. the Cavs twice, the Bulls, uh, the Nuggets, the Mavericks, the Raptors. So they'll come back to earth a little bit. But, Mike, you're, you're not an analytics guy. You're an eye test guy. Your yep. eyes are telling you, they should be telling you, that Harden and Embiid are special right now. They're yep. special right now. They're scoring 127 points a game. The league leader is scoring 114. Harden's got 82 and three. Embiid's got 98 and three. And Mike, every clip that we see is a pass from Harden to Embiid near the basket. So your eyes tell you that this is going to. They're not waiting on a guy to find out if he can play home games. This is their no. squad. No, they're they're a, they're a juggernaut right now. Right now they are. They're not waiting on a guy to find out if he can play for the first time in 10 months and if he can handle the crowd and if he can make a layup or will even attempt one over a 5-foot, 10-inch dude. They're not waiting on any of that. So, I mean, nope. if you're Philadelphia, you're feeling pretty good about yourselves right now. The Heat are in Brooklyn tonight where they face the return of Kevin Durant. KD hasn't played since spraining his left MCL January 15. And the Nets have gone, get this tone, Five and 16 without him. Durant says he's energized to be back and adds that the Nets are cutting it close in terms of getting it together before the beginning of the playoffs. Tom, what does Durant's return do to your expectations for the Nets? So my immediate expectations is they're going to be a lot better than five and 16. I want to get this number out. They were 27 and 15 when Durant got hurt. He's the best basketball player in the world, and you miss people like that. Look at the Clippers without Kawhi Leonard and look at Portland without Damian Lillard. And Durant's better than them. So, of course, they're going to take a hit. But when you ask me about my expectations, you know what I'm going to say. This is not one-on-one. -on -one. This is five-on-five. -five. What about the guy that can't play home games? When is he coming back? What about the guy who hasn't played one minute all year that they've never played with before? When is he going to get on the court? So if you ask me my expectations, Mike... You have to tell me when are Kyrie Irving and Ben Simmons going to be full-time before I tell you my expectations. Well, my, my expectations are about like yours. They're going to be better. They got arguably the best player in the league coming back, Kevin Durant. Yeah. Um, yeah. You all know who I am. They, they, you know who he is. He's coming back. They'll be better. Do I expect them to be great right away? No. They don't have time to get to great this season to me, Tony, because if, if, if they play even to... 14 and 6 over the final 20 games. 
that may not be good enough, probably wouldn't be, to get Brooklyn out of the play-in round. They look destined for the play-in. They're not catching Boston. I don't even have them catching Toronto. I haven't finished in eighth. Maybe they can finish seventh. Because you don't just walk in off the street. I remember Kevin Durant telling me that once when he thought my expectations were too high for some team that had a bunch of injured guys. It was like, well, hold, wait a minute. You don't just walk off the street and regain your form. Right. So I hear those words he was talking about in general. I'm now applying them specifically to the Brooklyn Nets. You don't do that. So I think they're going to be a lot right. better, and I think they're still going to have difficulty. As we sit here on a Thursday, they're an illusion. They're an illusion. They yeah. don't have all their players at the moment. And one of their players, Kevin Durant, coming off injury, he's missed a lot of games in two years. We don't know about him. <laughs> the Athletic, excuse me, the Athletic is reporting that the Buffalo Bills are interested in Rob Gronkowski. Gronk is from Buffalo. In 12 games last year in Tampa Bay, Gronkowski caught 55 passes for 802 yards and six touchdowns. In two playoff games, he caught nine more passes for 116 yards and one touchdown. All those passes were from Tom Brady. What about if he does join the Bills, do you expect him to still be Gronk without Brady? No. I don't expect him to be Gronk if he played with Brady. If Brady came back. I mean, I remember watching at the... I think I remember calling you. Might have been the playoff game. Could have been the last regular season game. But I called you because Gronk at the end of a game was running. And every body part was struggling to move and in a different direction. And by the way, now am I not ripping Gronk? Gronk's going straight to the Hall of Fame. He may be the greatest tight end yep. who has ever played. He's on the short list, That's right. right? But, Tony, it looked like when you see Mike Ditka walk in the last whatever, before he probably had a hip replacement, a knee replacement, Mike played that position and is in that same short list of greatness. Gronk could barely walk or run. No, it's over. There's too many miles, too many catches, too many hits, too many collisions. No, I don't expect him to be Gronk. I, I don't even think he will necessarily come back. I don't. Well, he may not come back at all, although the lure of hometown cannot be underestimated. It, yeah, it can't be. I hear that. If, I you hear know, you on that. For, for, a, for a swan song season or two. Here's the deal. I watch him very carefully because I think he's a great player. He's got 92 regular season touchdown catches and only Tony Gonzalez and Antonio Gates among tight ends, and they played much longer, have more than him. You're right. He seemed slow. He couldn't get away from people. But he's still a great receiver, and he's a great blocker. Can Josh Allen get him the ball? Yeah, Josh Allen's got a gun. He can get him the ball. So I think if he decides to play and he goes to Buffalo, I honestly believe that makes Buffalo better than Kansas City and Cincinnati wow. and Tennessee and Baltimore. I think he can I do I do. I think he's got one year left and I'd like to see it. I'd like to uh, see Tony, it. Don't know Tony, if he will. I hope you're right. He may walk. I hope he's got some time yeah. left. But Tony, when I saw him trying to run down the field, those whenever that game was, it must have been a playoff game. I remember shaking I remember my head the going, conversation. Oh my God. Yes, I that, called you right he away. You can't get away from anybody. Do you look at this? Yep. Right. And I, I, I don't we'll want to see him left on the field as roadkill. He's the great Gronk. He's yeah. earned an incredible measure of respect. Yes. I don't, I don't want to see that. Let's take a break. Coming up, Coach K is just 48 hours from his final game at Cameron, and we will ask him how he's feeling. We'll also ask him whether he's sure he'll be able to just let go. You and I, Tony, you know, in are 2010, not just let go, Mike, people. In 2010, yeah. Buffalo passed on Gronkowski. The, we are a little more than 48 hours away from Mike Krzyzewski's final game at Cameron, appropriately against North Carolina. We welcome back to the show our old and dear friend, and I emphasize old. We are all three old. We have known each other forever. I go back with Mike to when he coached Army even before Duke in the 1800s. Mike Krzyzewski, let's start with this. I'm told that apparently dozens of your former players at Duke are going to be there on Saturday. From many, many years back, your guys, tell me the truth. Aren't you a little afraid you're going to start to cry? Yeah, but I'll wait till that moment instead of crying before. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm trying to be really disciplined and focus just on the game. I just uh, had practice with my team, and I told them, remember, Saturday's not about me, it's about us, no matter how much people are trying to make it about me. But... Uh, I do know that 
I know there are going to be a lot of players back that uh, it's going to bring back a lot of memories, which I hope to try to remember after the game. <laughs> Tony and I would love to come up with something that you have not been asked in the last month as you prepare for this this game and this moment this weekend, Mike. Sadly, I, I don't think we'll be able to do that. So I'm going to ask you something I know you've been asked. What are you going to miss most? What do you anticipate already you're going to miss most about not coaching? Uh, two things. You know, one is uh, preparation. It's like, uh, it's like having a religion, you know, when you prepare a certain way with a certain amount of intensity and and commitment that uh, and you do it every every time every game to make every game that important but uh, uh, it, it, that's how I've lived my whole life I've spent so much time I this is our 90th practice so in 47 years I've probably this is probably my 4,500th practice plan then I write a new one every night and uh, so that's about 14 years of your life writing <laughs> practice plans. But I've loved it. And uh, just staying young by being with young. And uh, uh, what a great life to, at 75 to still hang with 18 to 22, 23-year-old guys. I'm going to miss those relationships. Conversely, what are you not going to miss? What are you just ready to get rid of and say good riddance to that? Uh, probably the way college basketball has been mismanaged uh, for decades and to where we're at today as a result of not listening to uh, the voices of the coaches because we represent the players and uh, to do what's currently good for them. We stay current with them. The NCAA does not stay current with them and I'm anxious to see if how this is all going to turn out because it's uh we're in a chaotic environment right now in college athletics i think i read somewhere that you said you won't have anything to do with the program going forward are you confident you're going to be able to to sort of let go of this incredible <laughs> dynamic this culture that you have built and nurtured you're going to be able to to do that are you that confident you will be yeah, I, I'll, I'll do that, but I'm going to be a Duke. My wife and I have lifetime contracts, as, not making as much, but still making pretty good, <laughs> uh, with, uh, to be ambassadors for the school. So, we're, you know, we, all our 10 grandchildren live here and whatever. But as far as having anything to do with the program, it's John's. It's going to be, you know, I don't own the program. It's been mine for 42 years, and Duke owns the program, and... He's going to be the new leader, and I'll be there in whatever way I can raise money and whatever, but uh, 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 not to coach or anything. People have said that, like you want to maintain. I don't want any control. I want to get a new dog. I lost my dog blue last summer. Uh, I want to drink more wine. I want to go to the uh, beach whenever I want, and I want to do the things that I have sacrificed doing to do what I love. And they're worth it. They were worth every second. But I don't want to do that. I don't want to make those sacrifices anymore. So we'll get you out of here on this. First, let me say that it's not fair that you have your hair and I lost my hair. It's completely <laughs> unfair. And I think the world should know that. I was going to wear a hat what? today. I was going to wear a hat today <laughs> because <laughs> you look pretty good in you those hats. my honor. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. So you don't play golf. Everybody in the world plays golf. Wilbon and I play golf. All your former players play golf. Everybody in North Carolina plays golf, and you don't. So what are you going to do? Seriously, what are you going to do? Uh, one, I got a lot of grandkids. We have a lot of land. I like being outside and working. You know, I'm, a, I'm a Polish guy that's uh, learned that to do work was dignified. So... Uh, you golfers, uh, you have, you even have people carry your bags for crying out loud, and uh, uh, I'm not going to do that. And and by the way, I've noticed that, I noticed that Wilbon moves around so much, like he, he he's uh, he used to be like a, a Chicago.
Chicago guy. Now you yeah, well, I admire just, Tony yeah. for putting up with you. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. That's the right thing to say. That's what um, my wife, the Duke of Columbus, so, says as well. We're thrilled. We're thrilled that you came on the show, and we're thrilled for your success. So thank, thank you very much, Mike. Thank we you. Are, thank we you. are grateful. Yeah. Thank you for everything. We, over the years, yeah. putting up with us, too. We much appreciate yeah, it, thanks. Mike. Yeah. And by the way, I watch you guys every night, so be careful. Okay. Absolutely. We'll I'm looking at. I'm looking can't wait at to you. see you. It's can't wait to see you on a riding mower. That'll be fun. There's Mike Shishovsky <laughs> on a riding mower cutting the lawn. Let's take one last break. Still to come, Bradley Beal reveals which way he's leaning about his future. Tony, Mike and I are in the Chicago Hall of Fame, and I went in in his class, Chicago Sports Hall of Fame. You got anything like that? No, you don't. Baseball players are always having a meetings today. What? what does that mean? The Chicago Hall Sports Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame no. baby. Come on now. <laughs>